name of Jesus. In the name of, well, great morning, Relevant Worship Center. I, 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 I got to keep moving. Um, what a pleasure and an honor um, it is to see you in the house and um, this morning, and especially those of you that are online. Um, to all of our guests who are here, they have chosen to worship with us for the very first time. Welcome to Relevant Worship Center. Come on, Relevant Worship Center. Put your hands together for our guests. I'm going to do a br brief recap, and we're just going to get into it. You know, this is we're, we're in a conversation, right? That means y'all have to talk back to me. Last week, y'all told me that you were in an abusive relationship because of the word last week, and then I invited to take you out to eat and to see a movie this week. Y'all are a mess. But we're on a new series called Non-Negotiable. We're dealing with the things of God that are not open or up for discussion or modification. And I want to say that when you think of it from a document standpoint, it means that it's not able to be transferred or assigned to legal ownership of another person. Are y'all with me? And so when we think of it from a personal standpoint, non-negotiables is that those must-haves, the things that are most important to you, what you're um, not willing to compromise or sacrifice, okay? So right now, I want to kind of recap just briefly last week. Last week, our non-negotiable was deliverance. Dealing with the strongholds in our lives that keep you and I from experiencing the true freedom in Christ. And we talked about how the culture of the church has shunned the supernatural and we've gotten away from true worship services because many now are focused on production and not his presence. And, and, and it's, it's a form of godliness without his power. Okay? And so we said what had, what's happened is sin has been redefined as a personal choice or an experience. And we talked about how we, we're now saying in this progressive um, uh, gospel or whatever it is, salvation, we, we can have salvation without sanctification. You can get grace without repentance. And you can get heaven without holiness. And so we talked about how demons show up in people and they're not in costumes. And people are wrestling with things uh, they can't see. But real freedom comes when you want the same thing that God wants for your life. Amen? And we also learned that this generation has been medicated and dumbed down. And at the end of the day, I, I shared last week, you cannot counsel or medicate a demon. You have to cast it out. All right? Because deliverance is our portion. But we got to be willing to pull down the strongholds in our lives. The word said anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You got to do what? We got we to gotta cast it down. We got to pull it down. And in scripture, we talked about how strongholds, is, it was an imagination or a reasoning, a thought pattern, a mindset. It's a, it's a paradigm way of, of thinking. Okay, that goes deep into the mind that it becomes a part of who we are. It can even change your personality. And I said that we were going to be able to take down strongholds in our lives. We were going to have to fight for it. Because deliverance is not going to come without a fight. It's, it's, it's against good and even. It's flesh and your spirit, right? And then the last thing that we needed to be reminded of was that a stronghold is a place. It's not a person. So I always like to recap, but if you missed it, I want you to go back and watch it. It will snatch your life. I mean, bless your life. It will bless your life. Because I'm real calm today, but last week they, Minister India said I was on one. <laughs> Whatever that means, that's just kid terminology. But okay, today, I'm going to try not to bore y'all today. But today, uh, the non-negotiable that I want us to converse about this morning is peace. Has anybody ever else noticed what I'm about to say? Or is it just me? I've noticed that the entertainment industry, sports arenas, travel, and etc., are producing record number crowds. Y'all some, I got some, yeah, in, in the middle, uh-huh. Have y'all noticed that? 
Y'all, there are new spas and various forms of relaxation, relaxation opening by the day. I'm like, now, are we in a recession? Or is it aggression? What, what is happening? Recreational drugs are at an all-time high. There's, we got a plethora of alcohol to choose from. Everybody got a brand. You get a brand, you got a brand, and you got a brand. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, you know, it's like this smorgasbord of things we can choose from. And then, here it is, um, and relationships are at an all-time high because we're settling and not being selected. Because we're wanting comfort without conviction. Come on, the fashion industry, it's off the chart, y'all. The consumers, we're buying everything, all the latest trends, so we can be in style with a, a, with, with a nation that's losing its status and its significance. And it seems to me that we're searching for sources of peace to drown out the stresses of life. Yet we're still coming up empty-handed regarding our peace. And I just want to take a moment just to give you guys some insight. Can I just say insight today? Just a little insight. Take what you need. Peace is the most precious commodity on earth. I heard Jimmy Ed Evans say that. And I, I don't know about y'all, but I've lived a while. I know I don't look that old, but I've been around a long time. Uh, I have lived a while and realized that I have lived most of my life without it. But once I got a hold of it, I'm doing everything I can to keep it. Anybody, come on. Let, let's stand for the reading of the word. I know y'all done got comfortable. Let me look at y'all up just, just in case some of y'all want to start to lean a little bit. Luke 21, 25 through 28. Let's read this together in the Amplified. It says, there will be signs attesting miracles in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth. There will be distress and anguish among nations in perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea and the waves. People fainting from fear and expectation of the dreadful things coming on the world. For the very powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, hallelujah, with transcendent overwhelming powers, subduing the nations and with great glory. Now, when these things begin to occur, it says, stand tall, lift your heads in joy, because suffering ends as your redemption is drawing near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. So right here, God is prophesying about the end times. He's saying that there would be no answers. There would be unrest. It says men's hearts would be failing, okay? And they'll be feeling them, and then there was there's a level of fear and expectation that are, that's going to be coming up on the world and up on the earth, right? And it's going to be threats to ruin our lives. But doesn't that sound like what we're up against, like right now? And I don't know how long ago that was written, but it's a long time ago. But he says that when you see these things happening, he says, "I need you to stand tall, and I would lift up your heads because Jesus is coming." He says, I'm coming to get you. And I don't know about y'all. I'm not homesick, but God, come get me when it's time. I, I don't want to be here when it's time to go. Have you ever thought looking for people and y'all couldn't find them, thought maybe the rapture came and you got left? <laughs> don't leave me here. I ain't going through that. You be trying to call your family, ain't nobody answering. Like, what the? Did it happen? I'm going. I'm going on the first run. Here. Don't I'm like, Lord, don't play with me. I'm going. But how many of you know that peace is our birthright as believers? And the enemy wants to rob us of our peace. 
And the, you know, the World Health Organization has declared depression as the number one health risk worldwide. And people are struggling with depression like never before. Um, but isn't that an interesting contrast to the peace of God? See, God's kingdom is a kingdom of peace and that promise, again, is for every one of us. But that's why Jesus literally came. Yet people are trying to find a moment of peace. That's why the drug addict needs drugs. That's the alcoholic needs a drink. Uh, people need more things, cars, houses, and we just got things on top of things and clothes and relationships and all of that. But Romans 14 and 17 in the Amp says this, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. Y'all see in the bracket what one likes. It says, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. See, one of the ways you know God's kingdom has manifested, it's not about the eating and the drinking. It's not about the, the all these wonderful things in life. It's, it's righteousness. It's being in a right standing with, with God. It's joy, not happiness. It's not temporary. It, it's, it, it's, it, it, it lasts. It keeps going and going. You know, joy in the Holy Ghost or in the Holy Spirit. So, But I came to tell you, I don't, don't get overwhelmed. But watch this, when you put your focus, where you put your focus, these days will determine if you would live in fear and anxiety or peace. Okay? In other words, your proximity to Jesus would determine your level of peace. Some of y'all gonna, y'all gonna thank me for this because you're gonna be able to save some money. The further away from, from him that you are, the more vulnerable you become to the enemy's schemes. Are y'all with me? Y'all, y'all got this? Your proximity. So it all depends on how close you are, okay? Because we can't get close in the presence of God and the enemy can't... It ain't happening. Are y'all with me? Because they both can't stand in the same place at the same time. It's either one or the other. Y'all right with you, right? So Romans 15 and 13 says it's like this. But may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing through the experience, it says, of your faith, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. And Galatians 5 and 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit, watch this, y'all see the brackets? The, the result of his presence within us is love, unselfish concern for others, come on, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but... how we act while we're waiting and then it says kindness goodness and faithfulness so y'all with me so listen as much as you know the presence of God by peace you know the presence of the devil through fear and anxiety this this is how we know God ministers in an atmosphere of peace because he's the prince of peace are y'all with me but the enemy operates through fear and anxiety and terror because that's what we're up against today. So when the devil takes your peace, listen to this, he has knocked out a critical part of your navigational system. Because see, without peace, it's easy to get carried away in, in Come on into the things of the world. You don't have no direction when you don't have no peace. Because without peace, you're, you're, you're just roaming. You, you're looking for something. But when you have peace, you're being guided. Are y'all getting this? Or this just bless me? Come on. But this is why it's so critical that we protect our peace, y'all. It must be non-negotiable. There is not a substitute or an alternative for God's peace. I love it when Trent Sheldon said, we can't receive peace if we keep accepting pain. 
We can't receive clarity if we keep accepting confusion. You know, and then I had to add my point in here. We can't receive deliverance if we keep partnering with our demons. And we can't receive peace if we remain in our past. Are y'all with me? We've got to protect our peace. Because when peace is absent, anxiety is present. The word says, be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. I know y'all are going to like this, but I'm going to say it again. Anxiety is not a condition. It's a choice. Now let's let that sin a minute. It's okay. Quietness is good. But here's the promise of Jesus. Look at this in in John chapter 14. It says, but the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, stand by. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. He says, peace I leave with you. My, there's that perfect, what does that mean? My shalom, shalom, (laughs) I give to you. (laughs) Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Come on, this is a funeral line. Nor let it be afraid. But it says, but let my... My shalom, shalom, calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. See, Jesus was not only comforting the disciples, but reminding them that the Spirit of God would be taking his place, that he would teach them all things and remind them of everything that he told them. And Jesus said, peace I leave you, and peace I I give you. See, we got to understand that Jesus is not promising the absence of a storm. Because see, anybody can be at peace when nothing is wrong. But what he is promising is peace in the midst of a storm. Peace in the midst of tribulation at a time when you, you shouldn't even have peace. Come on. Because this doesn't come from the world. Anybody ever been through something? You want to know, okay, now why am I calm? Any other time, I'd be going, I'd be losing it by now. But it's, it is the peace of God which, sir, passes all understanding and, and guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And then he said, and don't let your heart be troubled or fearful because he knew that the disciples would have a good reason to be troubled, just like we do. Jesus said, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm leaving you peace. See, there are things and experiences that we will have that's going to prompt us to fear. But with the sovereign God ruling, come on, the world and the peace of Christ ruling in our hearts, you and I can overcome trouble and fear. Y'all, my peace is non negotiable. I'm, I'm getting it now. It's non negotiable. Come on. I see your hand back over there. And if anything comes, in my space that's disrupting my peace that which God did not sin we gotta dismiss it dismissed because when we are distraught distracted we become distraught are y'all with me And I'm asking God to give us the strength to stop negotiating on the things that are not good for our lives that continue to rob us of our peace. Because some of us in situations right now that's robbing our peace because we're sitting at the table trying to negotiate our peace. No, no, there's, it's, not, it's not up for discussion. You remember I talked about what non-negotiable. It's not up for discussion. No and no. No is a complete sentence. 
Because peace is not in us, it's in the Holy Spirit that's in us. That's why time with him is so critical. Come on. Have you ever started your day off without him and everything just felt off? I'm talking about the people that get up in the morning and do their time and spending. I don't know about y'all, but I, I have, and it's unsettling to me. I, I literally have to just stop regrouping and include the presence of God in my affairs, not just in the morning, but throughout my day. Otherwise, I find myself negotiating what I deem non-negotiable. And let me tell y'all something. God is not surprised at where we have been, nor where we are going. But he promises that no matter what we encounter, peace will be the stabilizer in unstable times. Peace is an equalizing pressure that can bring our anxiety to rest, y'all. And true peace is found in the habit of trusting God and doing what he says to do. Are y'all with me? Because watch this, peace usually comes on the other side of obedience. See, I'm reminded, if you haven't shouted already, it's too late, get catch you next week. I'm reminded in the Old Testament, the priest, y'all remember how the priest would wear this ephod, like this long gown, and like on the breastplate, there were like 12 stones for some of my scholars, y'all you know, the nice colors, beautiful stones up on the chest and the heart. And it re represented the 12 tri uh, tribes of Israel. And they wanted to wear their little big hat, you know. And of course, it's not called a hat, but you know. I'm educated too, but it's okay. But the part that you did not see was the sack the sack that was behind the stones in his gar uh, garment called the Urim and the Thummim. They were two prophetic stones in a sack that was black and white. So when a decision needed to be made regarding something that they were concerned about, they would reach inside the pouch Y'all act like these are black and white. And they would pull out a, a stone and, and they, would, they would check the stone to get their answer. And some say that the white stone would heat up and others say light up. Either way, they would get their answer. How powerful, y'all better catch this, is it that God calls you and I a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who worships God. Now watch this. If we function as a priest and not function as a prophet, how do we get the information we need to discern or make decisions? The high priest needed the Urim. Oh, there is another stone in here. This was black. Yeah, it's black. Don't lie. But yeah, it's black. But the priest needed the Urim and the Thummim to determine the will of God. What good is it to worship God and can't determine the will of God? Okay. What I'm talking about goes beyond the garment of praise. It's our ability to have a two-way conversation with the Father to determine his will for our lives. He has put a command center, the Holy Spirit, on the inside of us to communicate with him. You text, he takes back. You upload, he downloads. Come on. You email, he sends a response. So there is a navigational system at work on the inside of you to help you and I to make decisions, to keep you from being stressed out or lost in a world of false peace appearing real. 
And see, the enemy doesn't want you to tap into the presence of God because he knows if you seek God in all your decisions and affairs, your stress would be gone. Addictions would leave. Come on. Depression would be gone. Anxiety would be gone. Doubt will disappear and inconsistencies will be gone and fear will dissipate. We always quote this, may the peace of God rest and rule and abide. You know, that's how they used to close our church in, in, in our hearts. We say that loosely, but that's real. Peace is habitual. It should be natural. It should be normal. It should be ordinary. It should be reoccurring. Because of what's on the inside of us. We don't need a rock to turn and blink and heat up to let us know whether this is the will of God or not. But the Holy Spirit is communicating on the inside of us telling, ah, 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 ah. Oh, yeah, uh uh-huh, go that way. And, you know, we got somebody that's telling us what to do. And you and I can experience a calming peace because true peace peace isn't found in our circumstances. It's found in Jesus. And it's a companion to God's love. God designed us to have dreams and goals, and he wants nothing more than to incredibly bless us. In fact, his word says that he can provide anything that we need according to his riches and his glory. But I came to tell you, don't focus so much on the things when you're looking for peace. Because you can have a peace that surpasses all understanding. And this guiding peace can change the course of your life. So watch this. Instead of now what, think now that. Now that now that we have peace, we can set aside those worries. When, uh, those worries uh, uh, aside, we can we can worries of when we can push that stuff aside, and we can put ourselves into position. Come on, to receive God's over. Come on, overcoming peace. It's a now that. There's such a power in his presence. But peace is a necessity. And we can't negotiate. you believe that you're holding on is creating a disturbance it's messing up your navigational system if your proximity is it means you need to move you need to move in closer because there's such a, a greater peace when knowing that our prayers are with God. John 16 and 33 says, I've told you these things so that in me that you may have perfect peace. Shalom, shalom. In a world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. He said, but be courageous. Be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. He said, because I have. My conquest is accomplished my victory abiding you can't experience peace if you're still negotiating your desires up against God's non-negotiables it's God's way or it's no way We're, we're coming up on some things that we've never experienced in our country. And I can't warn you enough. You've got to get. We need a stabilizer. Because some of us are going to panic. 
but the peace of God is a stabilizer to allow us to stand and lift our heads with joy with what we are about to enter or what we're already walking into. Move in closer. Get close to him. We don't have time to try to get to know him. We need to, we need to know him. in here today maybe to experience this peace you you first have to ask Jesus into your heart <laughs> you can't have peace without him Amen. you know the word says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died buried was resurrected the word says you shall be saved get like a prayer away like literally and if you're in this room you say pastor I want this kind of peace that you're talking about I want this I need a navigational system in my life if I'm talking to you just stand to your feet wherever you are I need this in my life Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We, we got to have him, y'all. There's no life without it. And when you get time this week, start checking those things that are disrupting your peace. Start eliminating, making some eliminations in your life so you can get focused on what God is saying. Because when we're, we're, we're focused, we can hear, we can, we can, we can operate, we, we know what to do, we know where to go. We're not asking people what you think. You don't want to know what they think, you want to know what God is thinking. We're so quick to call our friends, they, they don't have no direction. They, they don't even know where they're going, okay? Don't call your friends. Call the friend of all friends, the one that sticks closer than a brother. Give him a call. <laughs> Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call him up and just tell him what you want. <laughs> just call him. <laughs> just call on him. That's all you have to do. Those that of you standing, if you would just repeat after me and everybody in the room that wants to pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you just to come into my heart. Come on, everybody pray that with me. I'm asking you this to come into my heart, God. Father, I realize that I am a sinner and I need you. I need your peace, God. I need that navigational system in my life, oh God. Father, I believe that you died, you were buried, and you were resurrected, oh God. And I believe there's a day coming that where you're going to come back for me. And God, I'm asking now that you would use me for your glory and for your honor. And it's in Jesus' name. Come on, and everybody said amen.